All right, one more useful feature about tables is the idea of cross tabulation. Um, so in Excel, uh, cross tabulation is uh, basically what we use pivot tables for. And basically, a cross tab is that if you have a variable, say x, uh, y, and then z, we might have some other variable like a, b, and c that we want to be able to uh, cross tabulate and figure out uh, what happens at the intersection of these numbers. So like an example might be month would be at the top. That'd be January, February, March. X, of course, might be costs. The other one might, might be profit. The other one, of course, would be sales. Uh, and so we want to look at each of these figures across or cross tabulated against each of those. So um, we're going to give you a practical example here uh, or go through a practical example. Um, here is a brief one uh, talking about restaurants, how there's 10 restaurants and they have different quality ratings and they have an, a different meal price and, of course, a uh, different uh, wait time. So um, taking a look at this in a cross tabulated format might look something like this. You have a restaurant. Here's their quality rating. And um, so we might want to look at, OK, well, for a good restaurant, their uh, prices are going to be in this range. How many meals do they have in the 10 to 19 dollar price range? They have 42. A good restaurant also has 40 uh, meals from the 20 to 29. But what you also notice that they don't have as many uh, meals in the higher price range. All right. And then we can kind of start doing a comparison here about very good is got um, it looks like that they seem to have more in the middle price range and of course the the excellent restaurants the excellent quality tend to have more in the upper price range right and it looks like that um, this price range here seems to be uh, where the greatest majority are for all of the restaurants okay so um, it's just an interesting way of kind of taking a look at our data because we're cross tabulating it right? so I have an example here here's a data set um, this is not just 10 restaurants, it's actually 25. And let's kind of work through this a little bit and um, let's have some fun. So here is that restaurant data. And uh, what I want to do is I want to create a cross tab of the data. Now, there are ways of doing this manually. And I think learning the manual method um, is excellent. But um, we're also at that point now with Excel, you should your Excel skills should be um, at a point where you can do a lot of this using the advanced stuff and understand what's happening. So I'm going to select the four columns. I'm going to go to insert and I want to do a pivot table and I'm going to allow all the defaults to occur, which puts me into a new pivot table scheme. I'm going to give us a little bit more real estate to look at. What I want to look at is the quality rating in the rows. So here I have excellent, good, very good. And then I want to look at their meal price as a cross tabulation. Now that's in the upper part. And what I want to do is just look at the number of restaurants. I'm going to take this value here, restaurants, put this to sum. And it, it's this is the sum of restaurants, right? But I really want to make sure it's the count. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to right click over here, summarize values by count. Now, another way you could do that is come over here and go to value field settings and change that also to count. So there's more than one way to skin the cat on that one. What I want to do for these uh, row labels here, I have excellent, good, very good. I want to get rid of all the blanks. Come down here, click on blanks. And I want to do the same thing with column labels, make sure there's no blanks. Okay, there's a blank here, I'm going to get rid of those. Okay, so now I'm starting to see things kind of come together. All right, I'm almost there. Now, um, it would be good. We have, these are dollar values, right? For um, the meal price. And I want to create some small bins and some, maybe some data ranges. So Excel gives us a real easy tool to be able to do this. And they do it quite well uh, automatically. Uh, you can right click on any one of these headers and go down to this group option. And it gives you some grouping options here. What I want to do is I want to start at $10. I want to end at 48. Uh, and I want to group them in values from uh, of 10. Hit OK and automatically Excel does the manipulation for us. That's pretty fantastic. All right. 
And the last thing I want to do is I know that good is the lowest quality rating, very good is the middle, and excellent is at the top. And I want to sort these, but I can't do a normal sort. So what I'm going to do is right click on the row, uh, excuse me, right click on the filter here. And I want to go to, to uh, more sort options. Uh, and I can do a manually arrange them, right? Or um, I can also, I'm going to cancel here, right click on excellent. And then I am going to um, move this to the end. There we go. That's a quick and easy way to be able to sort those uh, categories. Now I have good at the top, very good in the middle, which is appropriate, and excellent. Now I can start to see um, in this little cross tabulation a very similar pattern that we saw before. Let me kind of make these a little bit bigger so we can kind of see what's going on. There we go. All right, so we can see that for the, the low quality rated restaurants, you have more meals on the lower price point. The excellent tends to have more meals in the higher price point. Um, and again, we're seeing 118 in that um, kind of medium low uh, uh, price point. Okay. Now, this is great numbers, but let's kind of look at it from a percentage point of view. So we can easily convert this from numbers to be a percentage. So what I really want to do is what is 42 restaurants out of 300, right? So this is very simple using uh, pivot tables. I just right click inside this field. I want to uh, show value as, and I want to do a percentage of the grand total. Wow, that was really easy. I'm gonna, I want to get rid of some of these uh, decimals. I'm going to go to home. I'm going to decrease the demo, decimal one spot. All right, same thing down below. Decrease that decimal. So we can see that half the restaurants, half of the restaurants are very good. 28% are good. 22% are excellent. All right. Oh, let's resize these just a little bit. And also, I can see that um, from a percentage standpoint, a good percentage of restaurants are in this range. Now, another thing we can do is I can go to home. I can do uh, some conditional formatting. And I can do some color scales, right? So uh, let's just apply this one, right? Um, yeah. And you can see here just by, this is like a, our heat map. And we just learned about this uh, dealing with data visualization. So it appears, though, the darker green is the higher number. And then the closer to yellow, or closer to red, excuse me, is the lowest number. And then the yellow is kind of like in between. So that's a very quick and dirty way of being able to demonstrate heat maps and then also change this. Now, another part of our data that we have is also the wait times. So we can easily convert this to look at not just the number of restaurants, but what the average wait time is. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste that pivot table, which is quite easy. I'm going to come in here to this pivot table. I'm going to remove count of restaurants, go to wait time, and I want to make this uh, value field setting. I'm going to change it to average, right? And this is no longer percentages. So I'm going to select all of it, go back to home, make this uh, just a regular decimal place. And now I see average wait times. And I want to make sure that this is, uh, okay, there's no calculation. That's what I want. Um, and now I have another cross tabulation that gives me the average wait times. So again, I can, I could run a little, um, uh, color scale here. I might choose uh, something a little different. So here, those areas that are red have high wait times. Those areas that are green have low wait times. Right? So that's just another way of being able to use cross tabulation with pivot charts to be able to uh, visualize your data a little bit more. All right? So I hope that's helpful to you. And um, this ends our um, lectures on data visualization. Oh, a uh, quick, uh, easy, dirty thing uh, is that that step-by-step -step is also available in all those PowerPoint slides that are in As You Learn. And there should be instructions for you in the notes of each PowerPoint slide. So feel free to make use of those. All right. Thank you and good luck.